2020. What more is there to say that doesn't devolve into unintelligible screaming? Since so much happened, and most of it was terrible, we're going to be doing a quick rundown of the most important news stories from 2020, starting with the action-packed month of January. January was quite, uh, shall we say, full. Started out with the Australian bushfires, which I mean, had technically started in December of 2019, but no one cares about that. It's just, it's just a minor technicality. The fires were fueled by months of drought and resulted in 33 deaths. You might also recall that while all this was happening, the internet was blowing up with rumors of a possible World War III after the Pentagon announced the killing of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. Teens everywhere were preparing to be drafted in the rumored war and do TikTok dances on the battlefield. It was very weird. Now for some rapid-fire other spring-winter news. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle announced that they were going to quit the royal family, which of course is huge news since everyone cares so much about the British royals. Seven people died in a helicopter crash on January 26th, including Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna, causing an outpouring of shock and grief. The Kansas Chiefs absolutely crushed the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl 54. I have absolutely no recollection of that happening. Me neither, right? Then, later in February, the Korean language film Parasite, directed by Bong Joon-ho, won four Oscars and became the first non-English language film to win Best Picture. Harvey Weinstein was convicted of one count of third-degree rape and one count of criminal sexual assault leading to him being sentenced to prison for 23 years. And finally, we have the big one. COVID-19. We know all of you were waiting for when we'd finally get to that one. After the first case was announced by the Chinese government on January 9th, most people weren't too worried. On January 23rd, Wuhan, the city where the disease originated, was put under lockdown. The World Health Organization announced the disease a worldwide emergency on January 30th. And nothing has been the same since. There was also the impeachment of soon-to-be former President Donald Trump, which also actually happened in 2019, but the whole saga was wrapped up on February 5th, when the Senate voted to acquit him of charges of obstruction of Congress and abuse of power on a vote of 48 to 52. Most people thought this would be the big story of the year. But those people did not predict COVID, and uh, ever since we've been in lockdown because of it, there hasn't really been as much going on in the world. The stock market saw the largest single-day drop in history on March 9th, and then four days later, Montgomery County Public Schools closed down, allowing thousands of students to pretend to be paying attention in online school. <sighs> Guilty as charged. We've now arrived at mid-March, fondly remembered as the month-long period when nobody would shut up about Netflix's Tiger King. Yeah, you know, I never did get around to watching that. Speaking of things that never happened, remember when Kim Jong-un died? He actually did it. We can thank CNN and various other news outlets for hyping up stories that he uh, died after a botched surgery, oh, but I'm sure everyone will be glad to know that he is actually alive and well. Moving on, the second largest year of the year, besides COVID, was the Black Lives Matter protests. The protests which took place throughout the entirety of spring and the majority of summer were sparked by the deeply disturbing killings of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor, although they gained momentum and fuel from the centuries of oppression Black people have experienced in America. We cannot give this topic as much care and depth as it deserves in this video, so we'll be linking to additional resources in the description. In the midst of all the protests, there was also the Democratic primary to decide on a nominee from a field of 29 candidates ranging from older than dirt to is he legally allowed to drink? On August 18th, Joe Biden secured the nomination at the Democratic National Convention, kicking off the general election. A week before that, on August 11th, Joe Biden announced that he would choose California Senator Kamala Harris as his vice president. You might remember hearing about murder hornets that entered the U.S. mid-June. Whatever happened to those? Oh, oh, oh no. August? Speaking of August, an explosion went off at the Port of Beirut on August 4th, creating a 460-foot-wide crater and causing 204 deaths. Lebanon's Prime Minister attributed the explosion to the unsafe storage of 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate. In vastly different news, President Donald Trump signed an order to ban TikTok in the U.S. on August 6th. Still no word on whether this has actually caused more people to turn their cameras on in school. 
I beat the Hornets, and I am back to talk about the California wildfires. Aren't we like six months past that? Didn't that start way back in March? I couldn't find a good place to write that into the script. But the wildfires were issued a major disaster declaration by Donald Trump on August 22nd. As of December of 2020, the wildfires have burned over 4 million acres of land, making 2020 California's largest wildfire season in history. 2020 just keeps getting better and better. Also in August, Montgomery County returned to online school, picking up where we left off in June. Is it insensitive to call this the worst thing that's happened in 2020? I mean, probably. I'd say that is uh, pretty insensitive. Yeah, okay. Although we've only just made it through August, we're now actually approaching the end of our recap because the rest of it is election stuff and you guys got plenty of that at the time. Yeah, I mean, just thinking about all that incessant punditry really makes me want to go throw my Chuck Todd body pillow into a river. We're up to the last few months of 2020 here, which includes that time in October when Donald Trump got COVID and totally didn't give it to anybody else. And then the election of Joe Biden, our 46th president. Coming in on the final huge piece of news from this year, uh, at least as of the writing of this script, on December 8th, the first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine was distributed to Margaret Keenan in Coventry, England. Now, in the US, only the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine has been approved so far, although the Moderna vaccine does look like it is very close to confirmation. Despite all that news being really sad, it can get even worse. We've been pretty flippant so far, but we'd like to take a few moments to remember those we've lost this year including Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna, who we mentioned earlier, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Black Panther star Chadwick Boseman, Jeopardy host Alex Trebek, Eddie Van Halen, Rush drummer Neil Peart, Congressman John Lewis, and the over 3,000 people we've lost to COVID-19. If you're watching this video from what remains of 2020, good luck. And if you've made it to 2021, congratulations. It couldn't possibly be any worse than 2020. Right?